and good evening, everyone. And once again, I will also uh, thank you for uh, allowing some time in your busy schedule to meet up tonight and uh, know a bit more about what we do. And as you will see through my tone of voice and through some of the examples we'll go through, uh, you will certainly appreciate how passionate we are. Uh, so. I will reintroduce myself as being Pierre Andre. I am uh, the founder of PrevTech Innovations. But beyond all of that, I, I am surrounded by a phenomenal team of passionate people that have uh, dedicated all their efforts over the last four years, almost five now, uh, completely focused on prevention within the agricultural space. So uh, as much as it is uh, the safety week in the agriculture this uh, this week, um, please keep in mind that prevention and safety is a year long 365 days a week a, a year uh, and it should be top of mind all the time it certainly is for us at PrefTech. and so without any further ado um, let's start the presentation and i think you do have clear instructions if there are questions please provide them in the question box and i'll be happy to supply some answers at the end of the presentation here we go Put this in full screen. As the title says, our purpose and the foundational principles behind PrefTech, it's in the name, prevention, technology. And um, it starts by doing what we do now and what I will be explaining. But our core mission and goal is to reduce risks at the farm. And we focus on one of the primary risks that we see as being one of the most disruptive one in all agriculture operation. I am sensitive to the fact that we are talking to um, you know, breeders, Holstein operators, and dairy people, but within all uh, agriculture operation, the risk of fire is predominant, and we are addressing that with um, a solution that I will be more than happy to depict uh, through this presentation. I will start with a story, and this is when everything goes, I wouldn't say right, but somewhat right in terms of the value chain and how we see um, prevention work. Uh, you can bring innovation to uh, a problem. You can assess the need and the concerns that uh, anyone may have with respect to risks in their operations. But then you can bring solutions, technology, but in the end, the ultimate, um, I would say, positive outcome comes by a joint venture between the technology and the producer, the client in this case, working hand in hand to actually be the first responder and actually be able to mitigate these risks. In this case of this story that kind of, kind of, I would say went a bit viral, what I like about it is, yes, it is visual, it is um, emotionally charged, but what's important is the, the unit that I will uh, present and the solution from a technology standpoint did its job. It notified the client. But the client, as you all are operators and you know very busy, have busy days. And when a notification comes at 10 p.m. after combining all day or having uh, you know all of the other priorities that you may have on a dairy farm, um, it's hard to assess whether it's critical or not. In this case, the follow-up, the service, the pat on the back saying, listen, I think we need to go back at the barn and assess together what's up. That's what went right. And the success here is into Carl's hands of having, you know, somewhat nurtured the trust relationship with us, having listened and understood what the notification meant and actually go to the barn, which will ultimately be the preventive action and measure that will change the course of uh, the risk trajectory. And um, this story is kind of where everything went well from understanding what their solution does to um, you know, operating on a day-to-day -day basis, but when a notification comes, assessing with us, talking, engaging with the client, and taking the right measures toward averting risks. Again, our mission is to reduce farm fires, and as we are doing that, we are also increasing productivity and reducing unplanned downtime. And I will explain in a more detailed way how we go about that. And quite frankly, over the last four years, as much as we bring the conversation and even the theme for tonight's meeting around farm fires, um, I would say that almost 99% of our daily interaction with clients revolve around operational efficiency, picking up early signs of things that are going south or not too well that can be attended to uh, at a proper time uh, with the proper measures before hitting critical failure, which brings a nuisance downtime. And I would say that's 
I would say 99% of our interaction. And yes, we do get the more emotionally charged and more critical uh, situations, which are, um, you know, potential farm fires or ignition point. Um, and this is all encompassed within a core philosophy that there is value in preventive maintenance. There is value to stay on top of things and, um, you know, keeping the electrical network uh, and other things in the operation, you know, top notch. And that overall adds up over time and it reduces all overall uh, different types of risk. And obviously the risk that we're more concerned about, about which are uh, farm fires. And if we do all this right, I think we can accomplish the bottom line, which is provide peace of mind. Electrical, as you know, it's our core expertise, is abstract. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you certainly don't want to touch it. And you know, we, as all of us, we plug our toaster in the, in the kitchen. We don't really question everything that works in the walls and whatnot and the breakers and the panels, but they are the critical asset of your farm. Yes, there are milking robots, there are feeders and whatnot, but all of these components run from the bloodline of the operation, which is your electrical network. It is It deserves the proper attention and care from a licensed electrician to be kept at par, and that will significantly decrease risk, also increase operational efficiency. And if we do that well, we do believe we can bring peace of mind to this abstract concept, which is electrical network and all the issues that they may bring. Why do we do this? These are, I would say, motherhood statement, things that you know, but it's a moisture and condensation water. That force line is all about water prone environment. It's a corrosive environment, both from manure and whatnot, and um, operational chemicals that can be kept in the mechanical room and, and other things of that nature. And it is a harsh operational context. Motors run and in a very tough way. When you have a block of ice and silage going to the unloader motor, that motor is gonna get a lot of strain over time. And it's just, or that scraper that gets caught, you know that things are wearing and tearing a lot. Uh, and, and, and on the right side, that will cause premature equipment degradation, operational downtime and hazards, and obviously increase you know, uh, the risk of hot spots and potentially fires. And it is to be noted that, um, and without being too, um, I would say dramatic about it, it is kind of well claimed and documented that unfortunately 50% of farm fires are typically due to electrical problems. Not all of them, but that's a great proportion, so it deserves our attention. So again, we are entirely focused on prevention and risk reduction. That's the only thing we do. We don't sell pumps, fans, equipment. We're not aligned in any way or form with other parts of the business other than having a, another pair of hands, another pair and multiple pair of eyes on your electrical network. See it as an electrocardiogram, looking at the heartbeat of your electrical network 24 seven and wanting to pick up these early signs of something that's showing malfunction, lack of health and being able to talk to a specialist who we are which can assist you with our expertise and service to pinpoint the issue and help you assess criticality and importance and this again should be put in a canvas of respect education and sensitization about the importance of upkeeping the electrical network um, I would say respecting it as a critical asset in your operation, and it should be done with a, the outright respect of your operation. This is your show. It's your business. It's your legacy. You've invested significant amount of time, effort and money uh, and passion in, in your assets and farms and herd and herds that um, who are we to come and tell you what to do on your farm? Our role is to guide you. Uh, in the best of our capacity to understand the nature of the issues, appreciate them for what they are, not over dramatize them when they're not necessarily uh, that critical. And if they are, hopefully, you know, get the type of conversation that will lead towards what ultimately is true prevention is a corrective measure. The unit. Um, we talk about it because it's a box. We install it in uh, the electrical room, the farm. You can see it on the picture here. It's a significantly small box. 
It has a lot of bang for the buck. It can monitor up to six different panels. So typically the main electrical service and up to other five electrical panels within the farm. And it is fully autonomous. It communicates all its data through a cellular connection. And it is a fairly simple install, which doesn't require to become an IT specialist or connected to the Wi-Fi and whatnot, but it does require to be installed by a licensed electrician. Um, the unit, as you will understand, is a means to an end. Oh, yeah, I need to say this. Proudly made in Canada. So all made here in Canada uh, by our team, manufactured by us. Very proud to say that and um, very robust as well. I may actually add that before I started uh, commercializing the solution, we had these solutions uh, in farms for about 15 months, tested out. Uh, every time there was an alarm, I would go to the farm, hire an electrician, figure out what's the problem, and figure out whether it was relevant or not before we actually put this to market. Um, obviously, the outcome was positive, and uh, I would say close to 800 clients later, um, I think uh, we are reaping the benefits of the effort we've put in the diligence of putting this product and service to market. The install is easy. It's not invasive. Doesn't require any retrofit or particular change to the electrical network, whether it's old, new, three phase, single phase and whatnot. And um, the unit is probably the last time I'll discuss it right now because it is a means to an end. It provides data information that can arise the issues of, uh, well, there's missing a step here, but step two, anomalies and degradation and overheating. And that needs to be put in the context of a conversation, which we are thoroughly leading with the client and their licensed electrician. So the unit and the detection itself are important pieces, but I would say they qualify for five or 10% of the preventive outcome that we are seeking. They give us the prompt, they give us enough information to see that something's coming up, something is uh, should ha capture our attention, but um, most of the effort and all the value is really in the handholding that we can provide to the client. So the types of anomalies, we're looking at high level of integrity of the electrical network. Again, not trying to make the farm perfect. However, when we reach a certain threshold or certain signatures of issues, that's when we want to engage. We have enough time to react. We have enough time to engage into a conversation and issue, uh, engage into a diagnostic effort with the client or their licensed electrician and pinpoint the issue and then find the right corrective measure. And as I mentioned, uh, the hostile environment in which these equipment and electrical network run will bring early degradation and early signs of decay. And that's really what we're doing is picking up these early signs of, of hiccups, things that you know eventually will bring an, a critical failure of an equipment. And that's what we're really trying to uh, put to your uh, attention. So the, the fourth step, which should be number three here is yes, real-time notification to yourself and your licensed electrician. Keep in mind that it is not an open ticket for an electrician to show up. It is an opportunity for an electrician to be aware of what's going on on the farm and be at service should there be an emergency fix and whatnot, and on which they have access to the same information so that we can help them troubleshoot, assess criticality again, and engage them into the right corrective measure. And, and sometimes we, uh, some electricians will ask us to help with pinpointing the issue with the methodology and the expertise that we bring to the table. Um, and on our end, we have a team of technicians, electricians on our side that follow, look at the alarms, manage these alarms with the client. Uh, we do this day in, day out. Into cases. Um, you know, there's so many. Uh, I've tried to pick a number that are relevant. This is a fairly not too recent ventilation control box, but you can see the marets over time got loosened, one kind of fell off, started grinding another one, kind of caught in fire, not fire, but smoldering, a bit of smoke. We caught the short, got client got notified, went to the barn, we followed through. In this case, it was pretty obvious and the client was able to mitigate fairly quickly. Yes, we are dairy in conversation tonight, but you know, I, this example also believe I believe applies, um, and, and you probably not as frequently, but you will pressure wash uh, your barn to make them look nice and clean, and this will bring all sorts of issues: moisture, liquid, water, 
misting all over the place and going to PVC tubes and in some cases filling up that junction box. In this case, you can see the graph, which is a bit technical, but shows that a nice flat line, you know, prior seven o'clock in the morning, big spike, big spike of five amps. So again, I don't want to get too technical, but when we're sending current to a motor, a fan, a pump or whatnot, we're expecting that current to go to that load and come back nicely to its designated cable. Should there be an issue, in this case, water and moisture within the junction box, you will be leaking current to ground. And in some cases, uh, that will create significant hot points. In this case, it was a pretty, I would say, critical situation. Seven o'clock in the morning, client is not at the barn yet. We prompt him to go to the barn. We know exactly from which panel it comes from, from which section of the barn. We're able to direct him quickly. First measure a task is to close the load on that panel and, um, you know, quickly um, avert, you know, a more dire situation in this case. I like this slide because it also shows how we work with the client. Um, and I think we are showing some positive statistics here. When we, across our 800 installs, about 30% of our clients will show an issue, an anomaly, or um, a nonconformity of some kind when we install. And um, what do we do with that? When we install, we don't want to start uh, going a witch hunt in the farm and start flipping breakers. We let it run for a week. We look at the data. We see patterns. And this pattern will, in most cases, fit with the dynamics of your operation. So if I look at the graph here, which may look complex, but you look at the install, we have a 4 amp fault. You can imagine the level of distress this could bring to the client and the electrician and even ourselves if we're present for the install. And listen, we haven't changed anything on the, on the, the, on the network. Uh, we haven't you know, tampered in any way or form on the infrastructure of the farm. It's an educated guess to let this run for a few days and see what's up. And we see the fall goes away. It goes back up. And a week later, when we do our onboarding call with the client, we have a much more structured conversation because we see that the fall comes at 6 o'clock in the morning, goes away at 10 o'clock at night, and it's from panel two. So the conversation that we engage in with the client is, what goes on at six o'clock in the morning and finishes at 10? Well, I got my employees coming in about that time and they leave about that time. Well, what do your employees do the first thing? Well, they open a line of lights. Oh, okay. Are your line lights open uh, running from panel two? Oh, yes, they are. So without even going into intense electrical diagnostic, the demonstration that we care and that we actually have an interest in the operation will lead a conversation which will actually get the producer to question his operation to, in this case, find a faulty line of lights. And we look in the barn, well, there's like three ballasts that are burnt, which is not atypical. And the success here is not the graph, it's not the notification, it's actually the conversation leading to an appointment with the electrician the next day, which led to opening four or five junction boxes and if changing a few ballasts that were burnt out. And this um, junction box had lost its water seal over a decade or so. And these morettes were basically swimming in water. The success was fixed. Well, the, 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 the issue was fixed and the success was everybody's pleased. We'll move on. We don't make a story out of it. These are typical things that will happen. The, the important part here is how we address it, how we address it respectfully, how we're not there to point finger, put anyone in a corner. We're dealing with things that are naturally occurring in, the, in your type of operation. And the outcome that we seek is the proper corrective measure on which we will follow upon. An unloader motor. I like this story as well. We're in May, Quebec, two years ago. Fields were flooded stressed out client knowing that he wouldn't be able to sow his uh his fields and he gets a massive alarm uh when starting his silo i can tell you the last thing this client wanted to have is a preftech alarm any alarm of any kind so we engage with him we managed to get a bit of his time through his frustration that were all encompassing and we find that each time he starts his unloader we get a massive fault we take on upon ourselves to work with his, his electrician with the client's authorization to do some tests. Let's not jump to a conclusion that it's the unloader motor. Let's test the cable, let's test the junction box, let's test the contactor and get a proper assessment of what the issue is at hand. 
And in this case, unfortunately, we had a total brownout and Wally well, got replaced. But um, the, we were able to act promptly on it and not cause further damage to other equipment that could have occurred if that would have lasted a little bit further. I got so many examples. Probably the last one on the docket here is, you know, um, less than so, but, you know, fluorescent connector points. This is what it looks like on our graph before. This is what it looks like after. We're pleased. We move on. We change it. I, how long am I into my presentation? 20 minutes. So, yeah, I will skip the diagnostic tool, but we do have tools that we can use remotely to pinpoint specifically uh, the issue at hand. Not all equipment are easily accessible through a controller and whatnot. A lot of issues we'll find will be through, um, you know, a sump pump, um, a well pump, um, different small fans that are, you know, manually controlled and whatnot. So there, there's a need for a rigorous process to pinpoint the issue. And we have tools that ourselves and the electrician can use to really pinpoint the issue and making it a much more efficient service call from your electrician. Should we find an issue on a well pump? Well, let's agree that the fire won't catch at the bottom of a well, but you very well know that what happens if your well starts showing issues at one point, it will not work. And I do not need to tell you the course of events when a well pump stops working. But if you have these early signs and you know it's a well pump that's showing, you know, signs of you know, issues that will lead to a failure, well, then you can have that replaced on a Wednesday afternoon before it fails on you on a typical Sunday night. And your electrician, having done this diagnostic work with us, can show up on the job with the right elements, the right connectors, the right cables to actually do the proper fix without having to do two service calls. And we are always there to accompany them in that process. So again, we are there to support you, serve you, serve your electrician as well to provide them expertise um, and methods that we've developed and you know within our team and the course of doing all of these cases over the years years a big word but in the last few years that we are totally able to really help them pinpoint the issue so that you feel well um, uh, accompanied in finding uh, these problems and finding solutions towards them support as much as you want we are service firm we are there to serve you concerns issues uh stresses with respect to you know the topic at hand you call us we're there and we ensure the integrity of our own solution by doing a yearly checkup uh to ensure the conformity of our installations farm evolve new panels come in new equipment come in an extension for a brand new section goes in electrical get electrical work gets done over the year we want to make sure that our solution survives the test of time as i said in the first minute of my presentation it's not a question of installing something and you're good prevention is a year long every year long um you know task and duty and we want to make sure that our solution survives the test of time the infamous question how much is it well the unit itself retails for 1825 and typically takes about now it's i'll say i'll be fair three three and a half hours by a licensed electrician um, and everything that i've discussed from the seller connection the service uh, the support installation support to the electrician troubleshooting support with no limits whatsoever uh, plus the yearly conformity uh, exercise that we do is 995. We guarantee the unit five years. And, and quite frankly, um, we haven't had any issues with any of our units now four years in. Um, so very robust. We've, uh, we've made it to survive uh, the harshness of the agricultural space. We have units that have been four years, three feet above a manure pit and are still working phenomenally well. So I'm quite proud of that, quite frankly. And we state the ROI. It's, um, you know, let's not get too deep into that. But uh, what we hope is, uh, yes, obviously the, the, the fire and that's, you know, the, the, the more critical case. But we're certainly looking to um, limit the amount of nuisance stops and breaks and downtime and issues that messes up a weekend or, you know, other um, mishaps that are kind of find their way in your agenda when you're already very busy with either sowing seeds, sowing the fields uh, soon enough or harvesting in the fall or any other 20,000 tasks that are at the farm. So uh, the ROI is if we can limit these breakdowns and consequential effects, we're very happy and we will have done a great job at it. 
Um, as a last point, you can see from the entire conversation, we do not bring the insurance as a, a, a cure part. We sell prevention. We sell helping hand towards upkeeping and maintaining your electrical network safe, safe for your farm, your business, your herd, yourself, because let's not forget electricity can be quite harmful for people as well. Um, and the backing that we've nurtured with insurance company is a recognition of the gesture that you are doing towards your business and that's how it should be seen we are not there to sell rebates we're not there to sell um you know incentives and whatnot that is not our business our business is to support you in upkeeping your electrical network that is uh, in a timely way my presentation I could flip a few a few slides to show you typical installations that we've done. It gives you a bit of a visual from older, I would say, less conform outfits. But again, not a. Um, I like this picture actually because the network's actually very clean. So you can't judge an electrical network by a visual appreciation. You need to measure and you need to bring table data to the table to be able to do a proper assessment of the issues at hand or no issues in in this case particularly. Um, I would say mid-age setups, a bit busy setups, uh, typical setups, uh, again, a typical setup, uh, living quarter setup. <laughs> um, so just a bit of an idea of you know, the types of farms that we've done from the uh, 50 Thai style type family run farm to the, uh, I think one of our largest, about 1500 uh, milking uh, dairy. Uh, which obviously takes sometimes more than one unit. That completes my presentation. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Pierre-André. And we actually have a few questions. So I'll start with the first one. Uh, which territory do you actually cover at the moment? Um, so we're based in St. Thyssen, so we've started uh, commercializing about three years and somewhat. So there's a stronghold in Quebec. Uh, and uh, about two years ago, we started uh, deploying efforts with team um, and food, feet on the ground in Ontario. Uh, so we have three people in our team, uh, two of which are in southwestern Ontario. Dave Clipson, which is our director uh, for Ontario, is based out of Mitchell. And Brian Kearney is based in uh, southeast near Brampton. And we have JF uh, Darcy, uh, Jean Francois, but Jeff Darcy, who's based in uh, eastern Ontario. And we have installs in Manitoba, Alberta, the Maritimes, and uh, I, I, I pretty much Canada is being well served right now. That's great. Thank you. The next question is what happens if we have more than one building? Very good question. From So I'll answer it in two different ways. When we install and we want to issue an insurance certificate, uh, we are looking at the risk as a whole. And um, if a building is less than 80 feet from the main building, which is typically our main concern, uh, it usually will require some monitoring as well. Um, and typically our objective is to do a conform install for the purpose of uh, of protecting your assets with the least units possible. But sometimes the buildings have had an old dairy to which there's been an extension, one to which a new service or electrical service, which is 500 feet later. Sometimes we'll have to put a few units to be able to cover the infrastructure appropriately. If there are multiple buildings, it may require multiple units. If I come back to the pricing conversation, our pricing is not multiplied by the number of units. It's not times two, three, four, or five. It is uh, a downscale because we're looking at an economic model which has to be sensible to the overall size of, of, the, uh, of the farm itself. I hope that answers the question. I'm sure it does, thank you. The next question is, um, does uh, your solution apply to other industries? Uh, yes, it does. We've been very prudent because I think what we do well, and I will see this with uh, a certain level of humility, is that since we focused on dairy operations, uh, which is, I would say, 65% of our, of our clientele, and we do uh, pork facilities, uh, sow barns, and to, all the way to finish, uh, finisher barns, and poultry as well, um, when our technicians, in myself, uh, my partner, Tony, wherever in the team that's engaging with a client, we've 
by the, the nature of our care and interest in the business, we have a good idea what's going on with the farm. Um, our clients are quite um, sharing in terms of the dynamics, what goes on, what kind of what keeps them up at night in terms of equipment. So when we call, our conversation is well directed. So we focused a lot on livestock and can and confined animal in uh, buildings. However, a lot of our clients own a grain facility, a feed mill, um, and you know I can't start the comment, but we're actually doing a cheese factory in a co-op. So we are drawn by our clients that are dairy producers and other producers to say, well, could you actually consider this? I actually store fruit and vegetable in a in a store a cold storage environment where my compressors are extremely critical, and we've had issues, and we like to be able to pick up early signs of issues so we can probably do a proper maintenance before we get into a critical situation. So yes, we are doing other um, types of operations, but we are doing them very prudently so that our level of expertise and service is at par with the expectation of the operators. So that means that we need to learn what's going on. We need to learn the dynamics and some of the issues that are more pressing and top of mind for uh, operators of different uh, types of businesses. Thank you. Uh, I have another question that says, do we need to install the unit on all panels in the barn? So the unit can, uh, one unit can read up to six different panels from, you know, I won't go through all the details of our, our conform installation because client A doesn't get an install and client B gets a different install. We have a very rigorous approach as to how we want a building monitored and we are very strict at that. So we will always take the main service and then up to five other panels, but they will all be connected to that same unit, uh, both on uh, current faults and temperature reading as well. And actually this brings up to mind a small feature that we have in our unit, which is uh, there's a battery in the unit. So when there's a power outage, we are able to notify the client of a power outage and when the power is restored. So not all farms have a standby generator with an automated transfer switch. A lot of our clients still have a, you know, a PTO and they bring the tractor and there's all sorts of use cases where our client says, hey, you know, here, here you get to know that you have a power outage. We have a power outage. We want to know that too. So it's been a, a very small and easy feature, but quite valuable to our clients when a storm comes in in the summer and they lose power because there's lightning and whatnot. Clients in the field doing field work and it's raining like this and the curtains are down because the power is off. At least you get a notification. You can call someone up, bring the tractor, put the PTO on and they get the power back on. So a small feature, bit off of the topic of the question, but I failed to mention it earlier. So oh, it's multiple panels to one unit. That's great. Uh, I have two more questions at the moment, and uh, if you have any more, you can write them down right now. But for the moment, uh, if we need more information, how does it work? Is there a fee to have an estimate? No, no fee. We'll actually be happy to visit you uh, on the farm, assess, uh, you know, listen to your concern, uh, understand what your business is about. We've we found and appreciated that now I'll, uh, uh, herdsmen or dairy operators operate the same way. So understanding the dynamics of the farm, their concerns will lead to have a proper appreciation of how we should install and set up. And uh, we'll then quote you appropriately uh, in writing. And uh, that is obviously free of charge. And it'll be a pleasure to visit you. That's great. And the uh, last question for the moment is, how much does it cost if I use your help for a diagnosis? It's part of it's part of what we do, so uh, it's, uh, it's it's there's no limit to how many calls we can have in a year uh, to support clients to do diagnostic. I will say that in some cases we will send out uh, free of charge an electrician of our team not to do electrical work but to assist your client the client's electrician in doing some fact finding and diagnostic uh, on site. Uh, we are there to somewhat indirectly. And I will say this humbly with no pretentious thoughts whatsoever to hopefully bring some tricks and trades to help troubleshoot. Uh, there is a bit of a method to do so and it's not things that are done commonly on a day to day basis. So if we can go out and help uh, some electrician to get some additional skills and we can help them and elevate the overall skill of the industry and in dealing with electrical issue, it will be totally in the direction of our mission. And so uh, there is no uh, limit to how many calls and there's no extra fee for additional support. Open bar. Oh. 
Well, thank you very much. So I don't have any further questions at the moment. Uh, what we will do is we will share with uh, the attendees the uh, information for all our local reps that we have at the moment in Quebec and in Ontario. And um, if uh, I can just thank once again, Hosting Ontario for allowing us to, to present our solution. We're very uh, happy to be a part of this uh, Canadian Agriculture Safety Week. And uh, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate your time. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.